All right, let's go. Roam across Rovanion. And it's definitely not sprint across Rovanion. That's the first thing I want to mention here. Look at the runtime of this video. There's nothing I can do about it, guys. This cycle is all about quests that take a long time. And this is another one. So I like to keep my videos around a half hour, but it's absolutely impossible with this quest. Uh, the second thing, one of the encounter set icons is wrong on the quest card. So that is not the one you use. So if you were shuffling in the cards that have this treachery, that's wrong. You need to shuffle in the cards that have the discard all the cards from your hands, weighed down treacheries with this symbol. So the rule insert gets it right. The quest card gets it wrong. If you play it wrong, well, you just played a slightly different quest. I mean, it's, it's still basically the same quest. You're just shuffling in different treacheries. Okay, and then the third thing I want to mention is this quest really makes you raise your threat. And so I included cards that reduced my threat. So I ended the game at 45 threat. But in the comments below right now, guess how much I reduced my threat by throughout the game playing these threat reduction events. I'll give you a hint. It's more than three. All right, let's get to the quest. So we're going to get an objective ally, Erdug. We're going to discard cards till we get a location. And we're going to set these objectives out of play aside. And then side 1B of the goblin's task has zero quest points needed. And it says we cannot place progress on locations in the staging area. And if we control Erdug when we explore the active location, we get to progress to a random stage 2. All right, let's take a look at Erdug and the heroes. Erdug is a goblin orc that is helping us. He has a 2 3 2 5 stat line. That's amazing. He's immune to player card effects. When he's free of encounters, the first player gets control of him. And if he's destroyed, we lose the game. We also have Arwen, so spirit hero, 9 threat. 3, 1, 2, 3, Noldor Noble action. Discard a card from your hand, add one resource to a Noldor hero's resource pool or to Aragorn's resource pool. Limit once per round. And then she's joined by her brothers, the twins, Eladan and Elrahir. They boost each other. Eladan gets plus two attack if Elrahir is in play, and Elrahir gets plus two defense if Eladan is in play. They both can quest for two. And then they both have an response that says after they attack or defend respectively you can spend a resource to pop them back up so that's amazing because they have a readying ability they are one's an amazing defender one's an amazing attacker uh they're they're amazing heroes and you're probably wondering geez why did it take me so long to get these guys in play this is the first scenario where i'm actually bringing them the reason is is spending those resources is, uh, is taxing, so you need resource acceleration. So in the early days of the game, you really needed to use Steward, and I don't like to use Steward if I don't have to, so I was always waiting to use these guys until I had different ways to add resources to Hero's resource pool, and also the thematic lineup of Arwen and her brothers is one a lot of people use, and this is a perfect quest for it. This is really a great quest to use these guys. All right, let's see what I get in my opening hand. I need allies because I need some questing power, and I also need to power up these two heroes. I have defense boosting, I have attack boosting, and I need elven light. There's a lot of cards I need, but there's also a lot of cards that are helpful in my opening hand. So my mulligan is really not dependent upon any one card, although elven light is pretty key. So if I don't get elven light, I tend to take a mulligan. Let's see. Okay, so we got the Steward of Orthanc, another Steward of Orthanc, Threat Reduction, Card Draw, a third Steward of Orthanc, and more Threat Reduction. I mean, initially I'm like, oh, this hand is junk, but actually the Steward of Orthancs helped me draw cards, Ancient Mathem helps me draw cards, and I have a massive amount of Threat Reduction. And I can discard one of these Stewards to start getting resources. Actually, I think it's fine. The Steward's neutral. Um... It might be a mistake, but I'm going to keep this this hand. It, it's probably the most interesting hand I've ever drawn with this deck. All three Stewards of Orthanc in my opening hand. There's no way I'm keeping all three. I'll definitely get one in play because they're amazing. But um, yeah, that, that's interesting. I have a lot of card draw, so I'm hoping to draw the Elven Light. All right, discard till we get a location. Okay, I'm glad to see some of those treacheries go away. Okay, well, I guess there's no better time to get the Hills of the Wilderland. X threat. X is the number of characters I control. X progress, where X is the number of characters I control. And then as a quest action, I can reduce the threat of the Hills of the Wilderland by exhausting somebody. So make sure you're playing with characters that have at least two willpower because of that card. Thor's Key is also good. It's a nasty, nasty location. 
All right, I drew Lindir. We're going to play double back, so that's going to reduce my threat when I clear it. I don't need to make progress on this stage, so that's a good quest to quest against. And I'm going to discard one of these stewards of Orthanc to give Arwen a resource. And then I'm going to play a steward of Orthanc. But that will increase the threat. But he quests for two. I guess that's fine. Okay. So he's neutral. And then when I play an event, I can give that event doomed one. And I get to draw a card. You only get to trigger that once per round for all the stewards in play. So no matter how many stewards you have in play, you only get to do it once. Let's play Elrond's Council. So that's going to drop my threat by three. And then I'm going to trigger the steward. So I raise my threat by one. So I end up dropping it by two. But I get to draw a card. And I end up drawing a dagger of Western A. So that'll be going on Ella Dan. And let's see. So the steward's questing for three now, thanks to Elrond's Council. And then Erdug for two. Arwen for three. Let's go against the side quest. Oh boy. Uh, the Wilderland Bear. Three threat. And it's either going to attack me or I have to discard a card. I'm going to just let the attack happen. So Ella here. I hope I'm getting these right. Ella here is defending for three against four. Uh, no shadow. So he is going to take one damage. And yeah, we added three threat. So unfortunately, we only make one progress on double back. I was really hoping to make a little more than that. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use Eladan, so I can exhaust him, and I make two progress. But I forgot to increase the threat of the Hills of the Wilderland. I remember that in a moment, because when the steward entered play, that gave me a fifth character. So I end up having to drop that progress right back down to one again. I do get it right. So already, lots to keep track of. All right, so let's travel to the Hills of the Wilderland. It's going to take five to get through it at the moment. I'm not engaging that bear. And we go into the next round. And we draw... Oh, awesome. Okay, the Dunedain Warning. So that's going to go on Elra here. And he is going to be able to defend for four now. Let's put some Ancient Mathem on the hills. Let's give a warning. So that's four defense. And then let's give a dagger. So plus one attack, plus two against an enemy of a higher engagement than mine. I am going to hold on to these two cards. And there's three threat in staging. Once again, we're going to quest against double back. I got to get through five progress. And this is where I think I realize that should have been one higher. So I do have to remove that progress from double back. So there we go. I got my math right. And let's go questing. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven against three. And we reveal a surging hunting eagle. All right. And then that surges into, oh, there we go. Lost in the wild makes you discard your hand after you play a card. So you add it to your hand. And then when you play a card, you have to discard all the other cards. That's why I wanted to bring this deck up against this quest. I don't care if I discard cards. I have Glorfindel, I have Elven Lights, I have ways to shuffle my discard pile back into my deck. So discarding my my hand isn't a big deal. I try to time it so I usually get stuff in play and hope that that doesn't hurt me too bad. All right, we made three progress out of the five and the Hunting Eagle will always engage you if you're the first player. It can't be optionally engaged. It's going to attack for three. I'm defending for four. There is a shadow plus one. Okay, no damage. And then Ella, Ella Dan can kill him. Okay, so far so good. Keeping my threat underneath the bear. Well, I haven't used Arwen this round, so I might as well discard one of these two cards that I have to get the resource. And now let's go into the next round. I get to play one card. I currently only have one card. It's Lindir. So let's see what card I get. Uh, well, okay, that that's fine. Elven Light, so I'll discard that to Arwen. That doesn't count as playing a card. I'm just discarding it. And I have four spirit resources. Let's play Lindir. Now, he has a response. After he enters play, I could draw my hand back up to three. But then I would trigger Out of the Wild, because Out of the Wild is after you play the card, which is you do everything on the card. 
All right, let's spend a resource, pull back Elven Light. Ooh, and I get the Keys of Orthanc. Great, now I can do the engine. Oh, that's awesome. Speaking of which, I probably should have gave that Doomed One and drew a second card, but that's okay. All right, Keys of Orthanc are now on our win. I'll explain the engine in a moment. Let's go questing. I should be able to get three cards from that Ancient Mathem, so losing... Oh, I didn't lose any cards, actually. It was fine. Okay, so we are sending nine. We're up against three. Uh, once again, a surging hunting eagle or <laughs> It was the same turn, and it's it doesn't hurt at all. So this deck avoids Lost in the Wild really well. Okay, so we make enough progress. Actually, I should have six on there, shouldn't I? I played, a, I played an ally. So three go on the active location, and two go on the side quest. So we still haven't cleared the side quest, but now... Now if I draw these cards, if I play one, I have to discard, discard the others. But you know what? I'm just going to draw the cards. I don't have a card to play right now, so I'd rather have, like, pick the best card out of the four. So let's see what we get. We get uh, To Sea, To the Sea, Honor Guard, and Iristor. Okay, so probably Honor Guard is what I will play. Well, we cleared the active location, so that means we have to do the effect on the quest card. All right, let's go to a random stage two. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Roll the die. Six, of course, because I'm awesome at risk. And we get Retrieve Erdug's Horn. Okay, so that is the one where we have to search the deck for one of these giants. So that's cool. There it is. Um, he's pretty nasty. And then we're going to attach the horn to it. When this guy engages me, I have to discard the top five cards of my deck and then deal out damage equal to the number of allies I discarded. So that's not very nice. Okay, let's grab the horn. So he's going to be guarding that. And then 2B, it's five progress needed. Each enemy with one or more guarded attachments gets plus two threat and plus two defense. When the players defeat the stage, we go to a random stage two if able. And then the gray mountain giant guarding the horn cannot take damage unless there's five progress at this stage. And the stage cannot be defeated unless we have both the Horn and Erdug. So, once again, getting kind of used to this for the cycle. It's mechanics within the quest that are designed to slow you down. Alright, so he is a four threat enemy. There is a lot of threat up in staging. Okay, uh, the Hunting Eagle, yep, it's engaged with us, attacking for three, defending for four. Uh, there is a shadow, raise your threat by one for each enemy engaged with you. So let's go up to... 30 and then of course Ella Dan can kill the eagle and let's go into the next round and try to get something going here yikes all right here we go the card we get armored destier man that is a card I absolutely want to get in play before I play it let's discard a card to Arwen because I mean why not so that doesn't trigger lost in the wild so I'm gonna put that resource on Elra here I think I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea what cards I'm going to be getting. Okay. Armored Destier, you attach it to a leadership or sentinel hero. It's restricted. Response, after attached hero defends against an attack, exhaust the Armored Destier to ready the attached hero, then discard a shadow card from another enemy that player was engaged with. So that is amazing. And what is also amazing is this Orthanc engine. So let's do it. Elven Light was in my discard pile. I'm going to spend Arwen's resource to pull it back into my hand. And then I am going to trigger the Steward of Orthanc to give it Doomed 1. So that means I draw two cards with Elven Light. And then because I triggered the Doomed keyword, Arwen gets that resource right back. The cards I draw is a Power of Orthanc and Ancient Mathem. But basically what happened there, for Doomed 1, I drew two cards and I didn't lose a resource. And then, in theory, I could discard Elven Light and gain a resource as well. So it's an amazing engine. So if you can do that every round, you just... Pull Elven Light out of your discard pile, drawing that card plus the card from the Steward of Orthanc, getting the resource right back from the keys. Uh, it's amazing. It's it's two cards for Doomed One. Really good. All right, we're sending characters on a quest. Good lord, a four threat enemy. I, I mean, I just am revealing so much threat. I just can't make progress. Okay, so since there's no progress on the main quests, I can't damage the giant, so there's no point in engaging that. Plus, I really don't have a great way to defend it. So we are going to engage the bear and then optionally engage the wolves. If they get a shadow with no shadow effect, they attack again with no shadow card. So we're going to defend the bear for 
against four. Uh, the first player exhausts Erdug, no problem. So then I ready with the Destier and I discard the shadow card from the wolves. So now their effect won't trigger because they don't have a shadow card being flipped over when they attack. And that is a four against four attack, so that's awesome. And I had to exhaust Eladan to try to make progress. But after I declared Ella here a defender, I can spend a resource from his resource pool to ready him, and he can actually damage the bear for one, which I think will be useful, because I just try I gotta try to kill these enemies, and Ella Dan isn't attacking for enough to kill him by himself. I'm gonna try to remember the timing, because it's after they're declared a defender, or after they're declared an attacker is when you're supposed to spend that resource, not after the whole attack or defense resolves. All right, the next round I drew Island Amid Perils. That's only good if I have a Sylvan ally in play. Let's discard Elven Light. And I'm going to give the resource to... I gotta guess, because I don't have any idea what card I'm going to draw. I guess I'll give it to Arwen, and then I can pull it back. So spend the resource, pull back Elven Light, give it Doomed One, draw a second card, and get the resource right back. So it's like I didn't even spend it. Okay, we got an Attack Boost and Ancient Mathem. Oh, now I have two Ancient Mathems. And there's no location, so I have a handful of cards that do nothing. I can't do anything with them. All right, let's put a Duendine Mark on Eladan, so he's attacking for one more. And yeah, I got nothing else I can do. So we're still questing against four. That giant is four. There's two, four, seven. Okay, seven against four, and we reveal... A Hobgoblin, so he grabs the top card off my deck and gets boosted by it. It's, uh, oh, that's nice, so it's my Will of the West. So when I kill the Hobgoblin, I get that back. All right, cool. We actually cleared double back, so I get to drop my threat by five. That's extremely helpful, because now the Dagger of Western A's will trigger. And I don't need to engage either of these enemies, so I won't. And let's try to kill the wolves and the bears that I'm engaged with. I'm getting attacked by Yellowstone here. Obviously, the Armored Destier is an amazing card, but it's really good against an enemy like these wolves that get a bonus based on the shadow card dealt. Okay, so we handled the bear, no problem. The Destier discards the shadow, and that would have made us uh, exhaust Erdug, so that would have sucked. So then we defend the wolves, no problem. And then... Ella Dan can attack for one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm attacking for six. If I add in Erdug's three, that's enough to take out the wolves. And then I'm going to spend the resource to ready Ella Dan. So then Ella Dan is still attacking for enough to kill the bear on his own. And that worked out really well. Okay, cool. So we took out the zoo that decided to engage me. And we will head into the next round. And I am really hoping I actually draw cards I can play. There's a lot of allies in this build, and I don't have many in play. And instead I draw an Elven Light. Okay. Um, I'm like getting all the cards that help me find cards, but I'm not actually finding cards that I'm hoping to find with the cards that help me find cards. Let's discard Elven Light. I'm going to give the resource to Elra here. We're going to do the whole thing with raising my threat by one and not really spending a resource. Oh, good golly. Okay, so the storm comes in armor Destier. So the storm comes helps me put allies in play if I ever draw them because the first ally won't require a resource match. And I drew a second armor Destier, which I can play because it's not limit one per hero. So I'm going to put that on Eladan so he can basically discard two shadow cards and he can ready twice without having to spend a resource. What a shame. I mean, that's what's slowing me down right now, is normally by now I'm questing for five or six more with my allies. Okay, I'm going to quest against the main quest, because, I mean, this is taking forever. Uh, that's only seven, and yeah, I gotta make it nine. I'm up against six. That's not great. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. The Slopes of Arid Mithrin. That's actually really awesome. When I travel there, I get to ready a character, and I have those Ancient Mathems in hand. So we made some progress. I'm going to ready Erdug. We're going to grab the Hobgoblin. I really can't defend good yet. I only have a one defense boost, so I'm only defending for four, and so the Giant is actually pretty deadly. Okay, the Hobgoblin is only attacking for two, 
and another hobgoblin was a shadow, no problem. And then I could ready with the dusty air, and we definitely have enough attack power to kill this guy, so he's dead. And then I get Will of the West into my hand, which lets me shuffle my discard pile back into my deck. And since I have no Elven Lights currently in my discard pile, I'm going to play it right now. And we're going to shuffle these cards back into my deck, and hopefully I draw some of them, because there was cards that I'd like to get into play in my discard pile. So we'll give the deck a good shuffle and start the next turn. All right, next round we draw Power of Orthanc. That's how I avoid being weighed down at that condition attachment that I could reveal. Two sacks of Ancient Mathem going on this active location. That'll get me some cards. Discarding Elven Light to Arwen to get a resource on her, and then we're going to do the whole thing. So spend one resource, pull back Elven Light, give it Doomed One, draw two cards, and get a resource right back. Cool. Okay, well, we do get an ally, and we get another Dunedain Mark, so we're powering up Ella Dan. Man, every time I say that, I gotta, I gotta think about which one I'm mentioning here. And then, uh, okay, well, we could actually put in an ally, so it's a nice little ally that gets a plus one boost to everything if you have no cards in hand. And, yep, no Sylvan to pull back. I got two Powers of Orthanx, two Elven Lights. I'm all ready to go. If I could get a to the sea to the sea and some Noldor allies I could definitely be putting them in for cheap but at least we added a little bit of willpower all right we're up against four and if I send everybody but the twins we are sending ten jeez oh Pete just I just can't reveal stuff that have low threat or a, a treachery that I could handle uh, so yeah we're one short so that's a shame I don't clear that location and the giant is attacking for more than Elra here can handle because he's only defending for four and this a giant this giant attacks for six so that's gonna have to stay up there too that's not great now we have seven threat and staging all right next round okay everyone's ready card we draw there we go Glorfindel oh thank goodness okay so he can be played from your discard pile so I will discard him to Arwen's ability and we get a third resource on her Unfortunately, that's not enough. I can't afford him yet, but at least now I have an option in my discard pile. If I clear the storm comes, then my other heroes could help pay for him. So let's quest against that. I should be able to clear this active location this round. We're going to send a total of 12. We reveal the gray moorland, so that's three more threat. So I didn't even come close to clearing that side quest but at least I'm going to get six cards in my hand and next turn I should be able to dump a bunch of willpower on the table so let's see top six cards here we go it's like getting a brand new opening hand to start of the game there we go a handmaiden Aristor's back uh some duplicates there's to the sea to the sea oh thank goodness and another ancient mathem but I am not going to travel to the gray moorland because that forces you to reveal a treachery after shuffling in the deck and if I draw one of those lost in the wilds I will be very 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 sad and I'm also not going to engage anything all right next round I'll have to engage that troll unless I can drop my threat this round and like I said I'm really not in a good place to take care of it I need another Dunedain warning or an honor guard I draw an elven light which is actually really good because I have all three right now so options finally holy cow it's, it's very weird actually having options i am going to play to the sea to the sea so you exhaust it you discard any number of cards reducing the cost of the next noldor ally you play to a minimum of one so i'll put that on arwen and i have glorfindel in my discard pile and i have Aristor in my hand so i have two good noldor allies so let's exhaust to sea to the sea i'm going to discard these four cards and for one resource, we're going to play Glorfindel, amazing stats, and then you can discard a card to ready him. So he costs one. Then I will spend another spirit resource to pull back Elven Light, and that'll let me draw a card. I don't think I'm going to trigger the Steward of Orthanc. So I draw another Handmaiden. Okay, now I can discard Elven Light, and I get a second spirit resource, which I will then use... To play one of my two handmaidens and when she enters play I get to drop my threat by one she's sylvan so you can't use to the sea to the sea if you're putting her in with some Noldor characters it's real easy to consider her Noldor but she's not okay cool so now I'm at 35 threat so I shouldn't have to engage that troll I've added five willpower 
and I have more cards I can play next round. So there we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm up against a lot. I'm up against ten. I'm up against ten. All right. Uh, there's one more. There's three more. I mean, okay, fifteen against ten, against the main quest, and uh, finally, just a two threat location. Okay. So we make three progress, so we are one short from being able to damage the giant. We can travel to this location. It's got five progress to get through, that's annoying. And yeah, I still really can't handle either of these two enemies. I have honor guards and I have more Dunedain warnings and I have an ancestral armor. So I just I just need like one more defensive buff on Elra here, then I can take on one of these big enemies. Okay, next round. Okay, so let's see what card we get. Hopefully it's something to help me defend. Uh, it's a survivor. All right, we're going to dig. So this is a digging turn where I'm going to try to draw as many cards as possible and find something to help me defend these enemies. So to start out with, we're going to spend a resource to pull back Elven Light. I'm going to give it Doomed One to draw a second card with it, and that's going to trigger the keys and give Arwen that resource right back. We draw the Rune Master, which is nice because you exhaust it when you play one of those Dunedain signals attachment, but um, it's kind of late in the game. I don't really care about that card right now. So I'm going to discard that to Arwen after I put Ancient Mathem on the active location. So Arwen uh, is going to gain a resource from that. All right, I need to keep drawing cards. I need to dig, 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 dig. So I am going to do to the sea, to the sea, and I'm going to discard two cards. So I'm going to reduce the cost of the next Noldor ally by two. And I'm going to put in Iristor. He's pretty awesome. So I can discard a card from my hand to draw a card. So he's only going to cost two leadership resources. I'm going to discard an Elven Light after I pull it back. So let's pull back Elven Light. Come on. Will the West is nice. Okay. Elven Light's in my hand. We're going to discard that Elven Light to Iristor, draw a card. There we go, it worked. Okay, I drew Honor Guard, so you can exhaust him to cancel one point of damage just dealt to somebody. So that'll help me defend. Okay, that's awesome. Quest phase, let's play Elrond's Council. I'm going to reduce my threat by three. I'll give that willpower boost to Glorfindel. So there's four, t plus two is six, and then that's 10, there's 12, there's 15, and we're currently up against 10 that's it's just not it's still not enough <laughs> we'll make it 16 and we reveal uh actually this isn't bad so it's a treachery that makes me engage an enemy in staging i was planning on engaging an enemy anyway so let's engage the giant and when he engages me i have to discard the top five cards of my deck and deal damage equal to the number of allies discarded this way so two allies, and you know, the good thing is, is I just drew that Will of the West. So all these cards, I'm gonna be able to shuffle them right back in. So two damage going out, one on the Honor Guard, and one on Lindir. I wanna leave the Honor Guard up for this attack. We removed four threat from staging, so that was amazing. It feels weird to say this, but we actually made 10 progress. So we're gonna put five on the active location, and we have enough on the main quests that we can now damage the giant, so that worked out well. We get to draw three cards. We're almost through the deck, so we should be seeing everything. Yep, okay, there's another Steward of Orthanc, and there's another defensive buff. So we should be in a good spot now. I do not need to engage the giant. I do not want to reveal a treachery, so let's just go right into combat. There's the shadow. I am currently defending for one, two, three, four. No shadow. So the Honor Guard will block the damage that would have came through. And then now I need to discard a card so I can ready Glorfindel. I'm going to discard this extra copy of To the Sea, To the Sea. So Glorfindel will ready, so he can attack for three. And then Erdog makes it six. Elra here readied with the Armor Destier, so that's eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is 15. And... This giant has 4 defense and 11 hit points, so 15 is exactly what I needed to kill it. And we finally get something. 
Okay, we get the horn. So when Erdug attacks, I can discard the top card of the encounter deck. And he gets an attack boost based on the threat. Oh my gosh, we finally got one of these objectives. All right, now we go to random stage two. So we're going to go odd, even, and we get odd. Okay, so it's the one where we have to get tiny. So this is rescue tiny. And so we're going to find another gray moorland and attach tiny to it. So, okay, there's weighed down. There's another weighed down. Those are the ones that remove all my attachments, but that's fine. Okay, so this is kind of the same thing. We got to get five progress on here before we can interact with the location that Tiny is going to be attached to. And my camera turned off while I was going into the next round. The card I ended up drawing was this Elrond's Council. All right, cool. So we have a way to drop our threat and we're just going to keep pumping out allies now. So we also want to get this defensive buff on Ella here. So now he is defending for five with the honor guard being able to block one damage that gets through. So there we go. We're all set up. And now let's pull back an elven light with Arwen's resource. There it is. I'm going to trigger the doomed thing so I get to pull back a or I get to draw a second card and then of course the keys put that resource right back there we go and we got the final warning because I'm almost through my deck so I'm guaranteeing myself I'm gonna find these things now so now we're all defensed up and I can discard this elven light to get another resource but I'm gonna put that one on Elra here and now we're going to put in the steward of Orthanc so three resources and he's gonna be questing for two what else can I do I have a resource, so I'm going to pull back Elven Light again. We get another copy of Glorfindel, and we're good. So let's go into the quest phase. Okay, it's going to be 15 against 9. We're going to go against the Storm Comes, so I can no longer have to worry about a resource match for my first ally. Sneaking off! Okay, so this card makes you lose control of Erdug. You attach him to a location in staging, and if you can't, you have to raise the threat in the staging area by 5. But then you get to remove this card from the game, no matter which one of those you triggered. Uh, that's not a big deal. I didn't have a plan for Erdug right now. Anyway, so I can attach him to the same location Tiny's attached to. And we make enough progress to clear the storm comes. So now the first ally we play each round doesn't require a resource match. So that's really nice. If you clear that one early, I end up usually with a lot of resources on Ella Dan, and that can help pay for my spirit allies. All right, it's an attack of six against six defense, no shadow, and then the armor destier can pop him back up. I will discard Glorfindel to ready Glorfindel, and then I'm going to play Elrond's Council to drop my threat by three, so the dagger of uh, Western A's gets a plus one attack boost, and that is just enough to kill the troll. Next round, we're almost through the deck, and we're almost through the quest, I promise. All right, we're in the end game now, so we draw our second dagger of Western A's, and let's go. So, pulling back Elven Light. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There's an Elven Light. So, spent the spirit resource getting a card. We get another Elrond's Council. That's excellent. Okay, I'm going to discard the Survivor to get a resource on Arwen. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be shuffling the deck back in real quick. And then because we can play our first ally without a resource match, I'm going to put in this Handmaiden, spending resources from the Twins. So I get to drop my threat by one when she enters play. We're going to give another dagger to Eladan, so now he can attack for a ton as long as my threat is low and a almost ton if it's not. And then I will go into the quest phase and play Elrond's Council and drop my threat by three more. Giving Glorfindel the willpower boost. So he's questing for four. There's two more. There's four more. There's four more. Uh, let's see, who else? Arwen for three more. So, yep, willpower's online. There's two more. So we are at 19. We are up against six. And now I'm going to play Will of the West and shuffle my discard pile back into my deck. I wanted to get that Elrond's Council into my discard pile before I played it. So we'll be able to draw all of those threat reduction events again. And let's go. We're up against six. And we reveal... Okay, fine. Cool. Uh, deep Ravine. No big deal. We make the progress needed on the Rescue Tiny quest that allows us to travel to the Grey Moorlands. We are also almost through the encounter deck, so 
it's a good time to shuffle it back in anyway. You don't want to get rid of some nice treacheries like through shadow cards and then have to shuffle the discard pile back in. That's super annoying, but we were going to have to shuffle the discard pile back in pretty quick anyway. So we have to discard cards until we get a treachery. I'm feeling pretty safe. Like, I don't think I can be stopped. Oh, first card, treachery. So doomed one, and then each player must choose either raise your threat by one for each ally you control or deal one damage to each ally you control. I mean, obviously that's bad because I control a large number of allies, but I've also been dropping my threat like crazy. So I can handle this big threat increase. And let's not forget the doomed one. So it actually puts me at 40. But I just shuffled back in all of those Elrond councils, so I should be able to drop my threat back down. We don't have any combat, so next round. All right, the card we draw is another Island Amid Perils, so we're going to play two of those because I have one in my hand already. So we're going to pull back a Sylvan ally and reduce our threat by the cost of the ally. So I'm going to play two, pull back two Sylvan allies, and that drops my threat by four. I don't need to make, make much progress this round, so... It's not a big deal how many cards I get in play. So let's discard Elven Light. Arwen gets a resource. And then I'm going to spend two spirit resources to put in the Handmaiden and drop my threat by one more. So there we go. Just dropped it right back down by five the very next turn. Let's discard a card to Aristor and see what we draw. Even more threat reduction. All right, Elrond's Council. Sweet. Let's go into the quest phase. I'm going to drop my threat by three more. Glorfindel will quest for four. And there's... Four more, so that's eight, plus four more is 12. There's 16, and we're only up against five threat. We need to make four progress, and this is either we lose Urdug, which we already have, or we raise the amount of threat in the staging area by five. So we raised it by five, but we still made enough to clear the active location, just barely. But we get Tiny and we get Urdug, so that's good. And now we advance to the next stage two. Like I said, long quests. Okay, we got to find the key, and we attach the key to a deep ravine, and then we can't travel to the deep ravine until we place five progress. So like I said, it's just like this cycle's thing, where every stage just gives you something to slow you down, and you just got to plan on long games. Okay, let's travel to this deep ravine. We got to exhaust Erdug to travel there. So he's exhausted. He wasn't doing anything anyway. And now next round. All right, the deck is in high gear, so we're going to play a little fast. Power of Orthanc drawn. Let's go. So the Handmaiden can come into play with the twins paying for her. She's the first ally. That drops my threat by one. And then I don't have much cards in hand, so let's spend a spirit resource to pull back an Elven Light. That draws me some Ancient Mathem. We can attach the Ancient Mathem to the Deep Ravine because, you know, more cards, right? And then spend discard elven light to arwen to get a resource and then we're gonna spend the resource to pull back elven light and we're gonna trigger the steward of orthanc with doomed which triggers the keys which gives arwen a resource right back and we get to draw two cards the two cards we draw glorfindel and threat reduction i'm gonna discard glorfindel to aristor and draw another rune master Whew, okay yep it's working well let's drop my threat by three more and glorfindel will once again quest for four and we need to get through this location and put five progress on the quest so we can travel to the other deep ravine. Erdug should not be exhausted. I forgot to remove his exhaustion token when I uh, did this. But oh my goodness, this is bad. So it's the Hills of the Wilderland, which of course is like just terrible timing because it's threat equal to the number of characters I control. So we're not placing five progress anytime soon. I can exhaust characters to reduce the threat of this thing. And I'm not going to have combat. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I can drop it the threat of that location by five. It's funny that I knew Erdog wasn't exhausted, but I still didn't see the exhaustion token I left on it. So I am going to be able to place just enough progress to clear that location. I actually had one more character ready, so I could have actually made a progress on the quest. Okay, but anyway, Ancient Mathem triggered, and now we have to get through this huge location. So, you know, that's fun. 
and no combat. So next round, that slowed us down, which, you know, is kind of this quest thing. In the interest of time and repetitiveness, I'm just going to summarize what happens this round. I draw Elrond's Council, I play Ancient Mathem, I play another Steward, I'm going to discard a card to Arwen to get a resource, and we're going to quest for a total of 25 against 5, and we reveal a Hunting Eagle, which is going to surge. Oh man, and it surges back into this one that makes me either deal damage to everybody, or raise my threat for each ally. So I'm gonna to have to raise my threat by a whole bunch yet again. My threat just skyrocketed to 42. I mean, you're thinking like, oh, okay, yeah, you got this, and then there, boom, you know, it just shoots up again. All right, so we're up against six, and so we are going to make 15 progress to clear the active location, and then we are one progress short. From clearing the quest oh my gosh so we got to go another round <laughs> i'm going to draw an ancient mathem or i'm going to you know get ancient mathem here so we're almost through our deck a third time elven light uh, there's a the last mark and there's uh, another handmaiden and we're getting engaged by this you know eagle who cares all right so i'm defending for six against three and no shadow and of course i can kill the eagle all right next round takes a while to ready everybody all right, so Glorfindel, we're almost out of cards we can actually even get into play. So we'll play a Handmaiden, so that'll drop my threat by one more. I can spend anybody's resource to put her in. And then we will give the last Dunedain mark to Ella Dan. So that's it. There's no more attachments that I can put on these guys. And then, yeah, let's just commit to the quest. So we're going to be sending 20 against 5. We need to make one whole progress, and we get, there it is, weighed down. So you attach it to the character with the most attachments, and then anytime that character readies, you have to discard one of the attachments, and you can never discard weighed down until it's the very last attachment. Okay, let's put that on Elra here. I have those power of ore thanks, so I'm not really worried about it. We have the progress needed, so we can travel to the deep ravine. We got to exhaust Erdug to travel there, and let's go into the next round. I'm just going to leave all my questers exhausted. I know I'm just sending them again. Ancient Mathem, yeah, sure, why not? Let's just attach that to the location. I don't even know what I could draw. We have 20 willpower, and we are only up against three, and we just got to clear this active location. So let's see what we get. The card we draw is, okay, it's another one of these big stone trolls, so that's three more threat. But we made enough to clear the active location, which gives us the keys. The keys are annoying. You don't want the keys first. I'm glad it was last. So it does reduce the threat of locations in the staging area. But you have to look at the top three cards of the encounter deck and then choose one to reveal every quest phase at the beginning. That's annoying. So if that's the first one you get, uh, that, that's a real pain. All right, Ancient Mathem drew us basically the rest of our deck. And now here we go, Erdug's Gambit. So the final stage of the game. Basically, Erdug and Tiny are going to turn into enemies. They're going to go into the staging area, and now we have to deal with them. So Tiny, you know, he's not Tiny. He's immune. Uh, and then while he's in play, Erdug cannot take damage. Erdug only has a 15 engagement, and when he engages you, Tiny engages you. So that's pretty nasty. And if you don't kill Erdug, he will attack you at the beginning of the quest phase, and if he deals damage... Both him and Tiny, if Tiny's in play, bounce back up to the staging area. So, you know, that's no fun. So I think we should just kill them right now. Why do we want to kill them? Well, we just want to put damage on Erdug, because it has five quest points to get through 3B, and we can't place progress there from questing successfully. When we quest unsuccessfully, progress gets placed there, and if we hit five we actually lose the game. So it's kind of like Erdug and Tiny got away. But if Erdug has no hit points remaining, we win the game. So we need to damage Erdug and get out of here. So we also have to engage this big troll. I'm going to now play the power of Orthanc and raise my threat by two so I can get rid of a condition attachment. So I'm going to get rid of this weighed down so I don't need to worry about that. So that card I put in my deck came in handy. Okay, shadow cards dealt out, and I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to defend the whole, the whole, the troll first, 
So his shadow is nothing. I take no damage, and then Armored Dusty Air readies me, and I'm going to discard the shadow on Tiny, because there's shadows that push enemies back up to staging, and I don't want that. Uh, okay, that shadow would have done nothing. So I'm going to defend Tiny, take no damage, trigger my second Dusty Air, discard Erdug Shadow. Okay, that also would not have pushed him back, but I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally lose one of these guys to the staging area. And then I'm going to spend a resource to pop Ella here back up, and then let's discard a card to ready Glorfindel, so this to the sea, to the sea. So Glorfindel can attack for three, Ella here can attack for two, and then Ella Dan is attacking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I need to take out Tiny. So a combined attack of 15 was enough. And then Eladan's going to ready, and by himself, he can put the 5 damage on Erdug. And that is no hit points remaining. And we roamed through Rovanion. It's actually a fun quest. It really is. It just takes a while. I mean, you just got to know, I'm going to sit down and be playing this one for a while. But uh, yeah, I ended up dropping my threat by 35, and I ended, you know, at 45. So ring that threat reduction. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Looking forward to making the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.